Yo, welcome. This is a uh, colorful talk on I Love Marvel. And uh, our next topic is with Kifilwe Nameng. Um, she's joining us virtually uh, today. Um, Japan is known for its traditional arts. The country has a legacy of distinct gardens, culture, poetry, and its birthplace of sushi. Uh, we talked to Kifile um, about the authentic lifestyle in Japan and her transition into motherhood. So hold on to your seat while Kifile takes us on a journey all the way to Japan. Hi, Kifi. Hi, Sandra. How are you? Today? How are you today? I can't complain. Thank you. Can you introduce yourself to our audience, please? Okay, great. Thank you for having me on the show uh, today. Uh, well, my name is Kifilwe. I'm mother, daughter, um, wife. Um, I don't think I'm going to say my age, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's who I am. <laughs> I think you can just uh, figure that out for yourself. And, and that's really <laughs> who I am. Uh, procurement specialist, uh, sister, lover of cooking, lover of partying love of cuisine so basically that's who i am in a nutshell oh wow welcome to colorful talk uh before we journey off to japan can you tell us about the modeling contest you were a part of just before you left for japan i think a few months before you left well, you know, what can I say, guys? You know, uh, in life, but it has a chance, right? So you can never, um, <laughs> you never know, you know? So, I mean, there was a, 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 um, a company called uh, The Revolution Fashion. Uh, a lady by the name of Simole basically has a brand, a plus size brand where she made clothes for them. And she was uh, looking for a model uh, for her business. So she put out this, plus size modeling competition call and I basically entered the competition call and you know what here I am today you know I I didn't make it to the top 10 but you know I mean I made it uh, I think to the top 30 years if I can remember so it was really quite a, an awesome experience you know around body positivity around plus size fashion plus size fashion movement uh so i think it was a great i had a great time there we had a great time there. it was a great experience yeah it was definitely okay uh can we can you take us to japan what led you to japan uh you know i was afforded the opportunity to go to japan i mean i, I was working i remember and you know just feeling so complacent and stuck and I really then, you know, I heard of people that there was a scholarship program out and I applied for the scholarship program, you know, and obviously you always think that these programs are like, uh, you know, fly by night, you know, you get there and mm -hmm. money and things like that. But contrary to popular belief, you know, I applied and, you know, it was really legitimate with the Japanese government and everything. And, you know, at the end of August in 2015, I got the scholarship. 15 days later, I was on an airplane and, you know, the, what they say, the rest is history. Wow. Uh, so, uh, obviously, because this is a lifestyle show and um, I'm sure when you got to Japan, it was like a game changer. So what helped your transition from South Africa to Japan? I mean, I think, you know, it's tough. It's tough. I won't lie to you. I think that... Um, uh, people take for granted, you know, acclimatizing, you know, um, just living in Japan, you know, the people, the culture, the food, uh, you know, it's it's just it's tough, you know, because, you know, in South Africa, you know, everywhere you go, hater, hola, hater, hola, you mm -hmm. know, hater, um, yeah, we yeah. know all those things, <laughs> there, there's no, there's no hater, hola, people are living very reclusive lives, excuse me, so it's quite different but i would not say unenjoyable i really had the best years of my life there oh, okay so uh which tradition or culture that is practiced in japan you found interesting 
You know, there's so much, right? Because I was engrossed in so many elements of the Japanese culture, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think the Japanese culture is very diverse because in different situations, different things are called or required from you. So, I mean, for me, I think uh, the one that I found the strangest was the fact that people leave their shoes at the door when they come oh, okay. into somebody's house. And it's, it's like sacrilege, you know, you can't just walk into somebody's house with your shoes on. And really the reason for that is because they believe in, you know, energies and auras and how, you know, shoes walk everywhere, you know, they're unclean. And, you know, when you walk into somebody's house, you leave your shoes at the door with this uncleanness and you come into the house as well. And what I also found very interesting was the size of housing, right? So obviously in South Africa, small houses in Kukiru, but mm -hmm. you find that people in other countries, you know, uh, and I'm not talking about people that are impoverished, but I'm talking about working class people, people with that have a, re a reliable source of income. And they also live in those small houses and that are makeshift just like us. In the afternoon, it's a dining room. In the evening, it's a bedroom. So I found that very interesting about the culture. And uh, funny you mention, in Japan, they don't have a problem with that. They don't look at you like you're I mean, poverty-stricken. No, they don't. Everybody lives like that. Everybody lives in really small houses because land is so expensive in Japan, right? Oh, so, okay. I mean, for for, for a, a one-bedroom apartment, people are paying like 4,000 rands, 5,000 rands. So, I mean, it's equivalent to South Africa. You look at the bachelors that we live in, you know, they pay. we pay the same amount of money. So, yeah, I think for me, it was just interesting to know that it's not a sign of poverty, you know? Yeah. Living in a small space is not a sign of poverty. What it is, it, it, it it's just a sign that, you know, you, you're not trying to spend millions of dollars on, a, on rent, you know? On rent, when, basically. I but I guess... South African prospect. I think that's interesting to know as well, because I think here in South Africa, we just have a different mindset, you know, when it mm -hmm. comes to living in small spaces. So it's mm -hmm. good to know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But I had a good time, yes. Uh, uh, before we get to the good times, which restaurants did you circulate often? So is there a particular restaurant that you went to? Oh, definitely, definitely. I had a real, I mean, I think for me, uh, you know, after African food, South African food, I really love Thai cuisine. I really love the food. I love the flavors. I love the smells. And, you know, I'm, I'm really into Thai and Indian, uh, North, South, Eastern Indian cuisine. So I really enjoy that. There is one particular restaurant that I did frequent and was a Thai restaurant. Okay. And they made the most amazing food out of this world, you know. And I had never had experience of eating Thai food before that. So, I was actually you know, about to ask. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I had never. But I think that place really served like authentic Thai, you know. And oh, okay. yeah, I, just, I, I, I blame a good five kgs of the white cup <laughs> cake in the can. <laughs> <laughs> like now i'm becoming so hungry i wish i could actually taste some of that food no definitely you know and i mean like you know sushi is you know in south africa is considered such a hoity toity high mm. you know i mean they they have really awesome restaurants that side you know we we have no waiters you order all your own food off a screen and the food basically comes to you like on a conveyor belt as well you know and so I guess really the technology is up a notch as well. And also, you know, it makes everything easier because now you're as in well. control. Mm. You, know? you don't need a waiter to come and you're still serving table six and seven. No, the people in the kitchen at the back, they prepare and they send you your food right away. You know, and the name of the restaurants, I remember very, uh, we used to call it um, the 100 yen sushi, which means the 10 rand sushi. Oh. Uh, so two of sushi is 10 rand. And, um, and I don't think you can get sushi for 10 rand in South Africa. No, no. So, I mean, with a, with like 100 rand in Japan, you can literally eat like 10 or 20, 10 or 12 pieces of sushi with a dessert maybe as well. So, yeah, it was a really awesome Top place off. and they served authentic food. And um, maybe tell us a bit about the nightlife, the parting life, because I know that is really exciting. You find that exciting. Definitely. I think the nightlife, um, I, you know, I'm a party people, you know, so even mm -hmm. in South Africa, you know, I was out there, you know, 
in the clubs doing your thing party, really I'm, I'm a social person so uh-huh. I mean, there are many places that are really awesome i thought they were awesome and i love them uh one of them being um uh the uh, a nightclub called in, so in japan they have distinctions called international nightclub and local okay. nightclub so uh, there was one uh, international nightclub called Chambers. Excuse my baby in the background, please. Oh. Uh, because of being a mother. <laughs> uh, and so I used to love the restaurant, Chamber, uh, Chambers Nightclub, really international music. Um, they play some house music from time to time as well, South African. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, the picture is really a reflection of what the knife like, looks like. And uh, um, okay. this a picture actually is from um, a place in Japan called Shinjuku. Uh, so it's also like a very busy restaurant filled place. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. So that's definitely, this picture brings back a lot of memories like a lot of memories and, a lot of memories you know, japan is a very safe country um you know so you can go out all hours of the night you know you can go out partying uh you know uh, you can uh, go crazy and, be, go and still crazy, be safe but I think it's safe you know so you don't have to get worried about uh, nooks and crannies you know somebody waiting for you in the dark or mm-hmm. a young boy ready to oh <laughs> You know, the pictures you're putting on your reel really remind me of myself. Because that, di- you know, I think there's me missing somewhere in that picture. We should ask the the producer to Photoshop me in there. <laughs> I think we'll do that. <laughs> okay. And then, so obviously, the nightlife picture. comes uh, transportation, right? How does that work? Because usually here in South Africa, all we ever do is Uber or maybe drive yourself to wherever you have to be. Um, how's the transportation that side? Especially at night. Well, I mean, guys, I always tell I always tell the story of the proverbial twelve o'clock train, right? Okay. Uh, that you have to get to where you need to be because at twelve o'clock the last train is coming, and you know it. Uh, it's such a bad thing. The 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 public transport. Let me speak of that first. Is wonderful, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, it's consistent. It's on time. You know, you could literally check on Google Maps. Uh, you, you can follow the train. You can see which station it is right now. So if, for example, wow. it takes you five minutes to walk to the station, uh, then it means that you will then be at the station. And if you have the station's five minutes away from you, then you know the train will be there in five minutes. So you don't have to get there and wait. And it's reliable. It's on time. It's consistent and very affordable as well. You know, so like, Maybe a 30-minute trip would be like 10 rands or 20 rands. You know, very affordable and safe. Okay. And like, That's good to know. Like, and uh, I guess um, you don't have an excuse of being late, especially yeah. going to work. You don't, you don't. You know, because <laughs> uh, everything's on time. I mean, in Japan, and I also found every, everything was on time in Japan. So the trains people the services so i mean naturally if everything is on time you'll be on time as well as well yeah and i think it's just a good culture as well to teach yourself just to always be on time because you know africans and times you just have this stigma that uh uh, what is it she's black uh, african time african African time time. yes Yes. definitely and i think it's um i think it's a, it's a wrong perception because I think what people refer to is just the casualness of Africans, you know. I don't think we don't consider being on time. I just think that time is not such of a, a pressure point in Africa mm. like it is in other parts of the world. In other pro- parts of the country. But definitely in Japan, everything's on time, you know. And like I said, you know, the 12 o'clock train, if you go out partying, you need to make sure that you have the train in whatever that's uh, the picture that you so if you miss that train at 12 bad. what happens <laughs> you're either gonna sleep at the station or you're what? gonna sleep where you were or you're gonna have to catch a cab home and that's obviously quite a bit of money extra but you know uh, or you'll just you clap the whole night long definitely i mean I, I mean uh when you think about how much the, the cab costs back and how much 
three more drinks will cost you in the club. It's just safer to wait. And just it's safer to get, to get the drink. <laughs> yes, it's safer to get the drink and wait it out. Unless you have somewhere urgent to go. But fortunately, I didn't have family or anybody that was waiting for me at home. At the time, I was still a student. So it was great. And it does sound like you had the time of your life, right? Definitely. No responsibilities Even there. No kids. No husband. Uh, eating a lot, you know, going out. I mean, the core of what I was there to do was to study, right? Yes. Uh, so, I mean, in between studying, you know, and living the life, I think that was awesome. Okay. I know towards yeah. the end of your stay in Japan, you got a job. Can you uh, maybe tell us about the experience of working in Japan? Uh, I mean, Japanese working environments, guys, South Africa is nothing it's nothing will prepare you for the long hours i mean oh, you wow. get to work at nine and you can't leave before your boss leaves your what? Boss is work you're stuck in the office till like 9 p.m and the the going out culture after work for the japanese is very intense because every other night you'd find yourself being out there you know you have to go out for dinner or go out for drinks and if you don't you're seen as rude so you are, they very, look at you as rude. Yeah, it's viewed as rude. Well, I guess social, that's right? a culture difference as well, right? Definitely. So, and I mean, the boss, if the boss is going out that night and he wants you to go to dinner, you know, it's unspoken rule. You guys have to not only go to dinner, but stay until he leaves. So, or he or she leaves. So, it, it's fun in the beginning. I mean, what gets me, you know... In South Africa, you'll have a contract that you have to be at work from maybe nine until four or whatever. But so in Japan, you don't have such in place. So obviously you do have a contract, right? That says a nine to fiver. I mean, if you're a factory worker, you'll definitely do a nine to five. But for example, in my field of work, we're in school consultative and you, we work on projects and we have deadlines, you know, you need to put the extra hours in. So it becomes an unspoken uh, Japanese people love hardworking people, so spending a lot of time at work shows that you're a hard worker in from their perspective. So those are the unwritten rules. Oh, okay. Uh, well, as an audience listening to this, I think it is very important for you to know um, about Japan and other places in the countries. In case you are interested in traveling to Japan, at least now you have a clue of what's happening there. But, um, I mean, after being away from home for almost two years, how did you adjust um, uh, when you got back from, to South Africa? Crazy, you know. I, I thought, you know, people think home is home, but I, I think I had my mentality and the way of life had shifted and I had adjusted so much to the Japanese way of life, you know. I always make a joke and say, you know, it's so safe in Japan. When I got back home, you know, I wouldn't lock the door at night. I'd forget or I'd forget to close my windows, uh, you know. So, I mean, obviously, I live in Soweto, you know, not <laughs> locking your door and closing your windows is not a you must here at night, in south africa in general so you know it's adapting to those type of things to, to you know acclimatize yourself to say you know you need to be more careful you need to be more vigilant you know don't just leave your phone there you know because in japan if you leave your phone in a restaurant and you go back you find it if you go back in two weeks you find mm. your phone. as long as you've lost your phone somewhere somebody uh, will find your phone uh, and they'll keep it the, safe for you the picture that the 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 producers showing, uh, it's it's a place called Shibuya Crossing, in oh. uh, Tokyo. Yes, yes, yes. It's a very famous crossing. You'll see on a lot of the movies. Um, they have they they have a like an aerial view of the picture as well. So the police are the police are not everywhere, but Japan is. Safe. But it's just safe. It's just safe. Generally, there's a high element of morals of. You know, don't take people things. I mean, umbrellas, I think, are the one of the most stolen items in Japan. Because when and you, why is that? Shop, you leave your umbrella outside and when you walk out, you take it out. So, I mean, the <laughs> you take somebody else's umbrella, they take yours, you know. They it's just a mix-up. I think it's not a mix-up. It's more of like a system, right? 
Oh, okay. You leave your umbrella. I take your umbrella. She it doesn't make umbrella. a difference, really. So with time, you know, with time, you you eventually have like these massive amounts of umbrellas that you have, and they just keep rotating in the system. <laughs> Oh, that's your, your crazy my, like really awesome memories i see one and of my the producer is home. pressing us on time as well okay so I'm i think so let's sorry. fast forward uh to uh-huh. motherhood actually um Definitely. how has that changed you because obviously you went to japan you studied you came back and then a few months few years later you are a mother and you are a wife so how has that experience considering japan and coming back and becoming a mother how has that changed you overall oh you know um being a mother it's really something you can't explain you know um Mm -hmm. it changes the core of who you are you know there are a lot of things that have changed about me from a personality perspective and i just think you know um uh it 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 provides a lot of uh of, uh, of wholeness because of the fact that you know i'm a working mom you know, and um, sometimes you get busy with life and your career, and so it's such a it's such a it's such a wonderful addition to the madness already. You know, and I think being a wife, you know, it's a really big adjustment in the sense that now you are you have committed yourself to to care and love two people first. Yeah. Know? Uh, so, you know, that comes with its blows and its punches. But marriage has been uh, really awesome from what I have seen, from, from the perspective so far. That I have. So, so far. far, so good. <laughs> and I'm thinking that it will be really great in the future, really. I, mean, I hope so, um, too. You know, yeah, me and my partner have a, a really great time together. We have great understanding. You know, we share a lot of things in common. As well. Uh, so, mm. I mean, it's, it's been Which makes it easy as well. Definitely does make it easier because, you know, I can be a bit short tempered, a bit, you know, sometimes, Mm. but I found that with motherhood and marriage, you know, that those personality traits have left me, you know, I'm much calmer, much more relaxed, you know, much more content, not chasing paper, you know, Mm. now at least I've got somebody to spend my money on besides myself and my besides yourself. So you get to become selfless, actually. Definitely, you do. I think. I, I think if I, the the nature of who I am has been selfless because you know, but it it it's a different type of selfless. You know, it's As giving well. up sleep. You know, before oh, yeah. I would you know think five times if I'm going to give up a nap for whatever. A reason. crying baby. And not even a crying baby. Like even for it. I mean, it, it either must be work. Somebody's dying. Or I, or there's something <laughs> drastic happening for me to give up. But now, you know, you become selfless. You don't think about yourself. And you it's easy for you to it. actually do it. I don't think it's easy. I don't. I don't find it easy, to be honest with you. I think I'm working on it. It does become difficult. It's not. I, I know some. A lot of mothers say it comes naturally, mm-hmm. but I. I don't think it came. I think it was weird. You know, it's a different. It was feeling. strange. Yeah. That was strange, and I think I I still battle with the strangeness of it all. But still, I'm, I'm more open to, yeah, I think oh. I, I'm more open to the embracing of whatever comes to say. This might not feel natural, but I'm I'm open to embracing whatever this is, and even with its uncomfortability, you know, as well. And I think that's what gives me the peace to say. You know, I'm not going to say, well, I'm, an, I'm a natural mom, but I think I work on it. and I Day try by day. And I get better at I think it. my producer is about to have my head. He's like, it's out. Sorry to cut you, Giffy. Uh, but uh, no if problem. people want to follow you on social media, where can they find you? Uh, okay, fine. I'm on I'm on Facebook. You can check me out. So my name is Giffy Lebina. I'm on Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram. Um, uh, 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 hashtag <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, you can find me on there, check out my lifestyle, check out what I do. Uh, hashtag Stuila is nice. Uh, yeah, I'm out there. Thank you so much, Giffy, for joining us on this show. So it was an absolute time. pleasure. And so, so anybody, thanks for the flashback. Thank you.
Uh, so basically, the show today was uh, about Gifilo Naming, her lifestyle in Japan, and how she came back and it transitioned. She had to transition to being a mother and a wife. So basically, if you've missed out, please join us, follow us, subscribe on I Love Marvel dot live, and uh, catch Sandy on Colorful Talks with um, a lot of lifestyle changes, a lot of cultures, tradition that I'll be talking about from all over the world. So stay tuned. I am back pretty soon on your screen. Check you out. <laughs> On a short shot, hit the stage and make them jaws drop. Hammer time like a storm, uh. cause she love me for the awesome. Right. Pull out game, been exceptional. Thought it was love, it was never real. That's how the hype it can make you feel. Done the door, man, I got the film. I came to kill it, just give me the go, but my head didn't go. Me and my niggas, some sun, some folk got the go when your souls on the drip is so frozen. Ice in my face, you can feel I'll be cold. Shit is just different when getting the dope. You wouldn't know, cause you're thinking it's broke. Hell, it's my shock the shoulders, I'm shifting the globe. So much action, need a GoPro My shoot up on her for the promo Money chats, give a bomo Stacking chips, this ain't go slow You should get out of my way You should get out of my place I got no time for your head I got the pay for the chase I got the cash every day So much action, need a GoPro Overfocused in my dojo Couple bitches on my phone though Hit them back, that's a no-no She should get out of my way You should get out of my way I don't got time for the hate I got the paper to chase I gotta make a new wave Fly dudes, be the band Your girl thirsty, need a damn So much shade, need a stand OMG, he the man Smoke the game, black coffee Get dream, don't need a hand Oh damn, it's the gam on it See your girl getting macked on Strike a pose with my arms full With a smug face like it's Capcom Overskilled and I'm underpaid Outshine him in the summer shade Night vision when I tunnel gaze Thunder strike me in a hundred ways In the same spot if I ever quit in my number days No such hoes blush when I post up Stealth mode so I go hush Silent killer like I'm dead smiles Can't explain it's the X-File New flow with the new drip By the time it catch I'm on the next style So much action need a GoPro My shoot up on her for the promo Money chats give a promo Stacking chips this ain't go slow You should get out of my way You should get out of my place I got no time for your hate. I got the pay for the chase. I count the cash every day. So much action, need a GoPro. Overfocused in my dojo. Couple bitches on my phone though. Hit them back, that's a no no. She should get out of my way. You should get out of my way. I don't got time for the hate. I got the pay for the chase. I gotta make a new wave. Fly dudes, be the band. Your girl thirsty, need a damn. So much shade, need a dan. OMG. He the man, smoke the game, black coffee, get dream, don't need a hand.